Right yeah, feeling crazy. a little weird today, Frankie. No, no. Okay, good. There's a lot of garden gripes out there. People are uh, having, you know, maybe their gardens making them go crazy, even though it's getting into being the time where they all go to sleep. Yeah. So let's talk about this because you you yesterday put out some some questions on you know on Facebook and Twitter and that sort of yeah. thing. It's, you know, if anybody has any questions for Frankie, you know, you can always hit him up at any time. But um, Hillary Smith wanted to know. Uh, she says, "Hi, Frankie. Uh, we have a rather chronic case of clover and regular clover in our garden. What's the best way to get rid of it without destroying the surrounding?" grass appreciate your help yeah so when it comes to clover clover is actually um, a broadleaf weed but clover is actually something that's really great in lawns right now and the reason why people right now are saying well, why are you saying it's so great it grows in shade it's green it's easy to walk on um, it's really something that's going to take care of somebody's um, issues if they're having problems growing grass in shaded locations in order to get rid of it in the lawn you really have to hand remove now with the cosmetic pesticide ban you would probably hand remove that area you would then saw it over the area and this is not the time to do it we just showed you a picture of a lawn and that lawn this is the time of year where you really want to be removing any leaves off your lawn you want to be doing that final cut that final cut should be fairly short okay the reason why you want it short so so the blades of grass will not fall over that's interesting because a lot of people leave their grass kind of long going into the yeah. into winter and if you leave it long going into winter it's going to fall over and cause more problems so this time of the year no reseeding no really we control at this time of the year it's about getting the leaves off and cutting your lawn Judy wants to know uh, why she says, for some reason my impatience are dying there are random ones in different locations around the garden um, every two, one or two day another one bites the dust w what do you do about that yeah so th these questions here I think we, we popped to some other ones but yeah um, impatience if it comes to impatience that are dying in the garden mm -hmm. so this is for next season that's downy mildew so if there's an issue with downy mildew that happened this summer in your garden and your impatience did die Next year, you don't want to replant your impatience. Okay. Uh, the reason why it's going to stay in the soil and can stay in the soil for several years. Uh, and in the last few years, the downy mildew and impatience has actually kind of cut back a little bit. But they're trying to breed resistance right now in impatience. So with that, there should be um, there should be better varieties that are going to be coming up in the future. Cedars, um, we got to we got to cover them for the winter, right? Right. So we want to show you a picture of some of the cedars, and this is a common question that people have: Is it too late to prune my cedars? Yes, too late to prune your cedars. Is it right now the type, right time to be covering a cedar? If you have a cedar that's exposed by sunlight and wind. It is the time to be covering them. How you would cover them is just with burlap. You used to work in the landscape I industry. I did, yeah, yeah. I used to do this. Used yeah. To take them off and put them on in the in the summer. And right. when you put them on sorry, in the, in the fall, yeah. did you put them on tightly or was it more of a loose kind of wrap? Uh, for us, it wasn't. It was as tight as we could get it without killing the plant. You didn't want to suffocate the plant, was what I was told. Exactly. So, so even with cedars, even if you don't cover them, uh, if heavy wet snow is going to fall on a cedar, what you want to do is bind it up. So even if you're not going to do a burlap covering, you just take twine mm -hmm. and you bind them up so it holds them nice and tight so then that way if heavy snow falls on them it's not going to break them apart right mm -hmm. okay that makes a lot of sense now uh, let's talk about calla lilies yeah so calla lilies I had a question on calla is you know how do you overwinter them and really what it comes down to is the tuber so if you look at the tuber itself we have a picture of the tuber the tuber is this big massive root and what you want to do is you want to remove it for the winter out of the soil let the soil dry off you want to store them indoors in a dark cool space and you also want to make sure that you store them in something that's going to keep them dry so dry vermiculite is a really good thing. Make sure they're not touching each other as you're storing them. And sometimes if you can dust them with a little bit of sulfur, that's going to make sure they don't rot. You can store them just in a shoebox in a nice, cool space in your home that's not going to freeze. Amazing. Yeah. And anytime you have a question for Frank, you can go to uh, Frank, uh, FrankieFlowers.com or on Twitter at Frank Ferragini. You also have a Facebook page. Yeah, and I got about 30 other questions that were put <laughs> posted on Facebook. I'm going to answer through those through the morning. If you have any additional ones, we're always here to help. We want you to have a blooming great time outdoors. And uh, thank you, Frankie. Jen. No, thank you, Mr. Wild. Thank you. I hope I was the fertilizer to your segment today. So. You, uh, I said, you're kind of more <laughs> like the manure. <laughs> Jen is at Leon's. What's going on, Jen? Jen's going to be at Leon's. Jen, when we come back. But right now we're going to go to break. That's right. And we'll see you soon. How many people does it take to throw to break? <laughs>